Hey there. In this video, we're going to be creating some relative month and year columns in a 445 calendar. A uh, 445 calendar, if you're not familiar, is pretty cool. It's often used in retail. It's a special calendar where the months don't line up with your Gregorian uh, months, uh, as in the, the months that you see on your calendar on your wall. But they have a, a special scheme so that each quarter has... Uh, has four months in it. They call them months, but the first month has exactly four weeks in it. The second, or the, yeah, and the second month has exactly four weeks in it, and the last month has exactly five weeks in it. Right, so four, four, five. They do this that way. They so the um, the cords will always have the same number of days in them. Makes certain comparisons a little bit more more effective. Okay, relative months, relative years. If you're not familiar, um, these basically say uh, for any row in the date table, is that row in, in this year, if it is, then the value will be zero. Or is it in last year, the value will be negative one. Or next year, the value will be positive one. Things like that. They're super helpful in creating uh, measures like um, total sales for the current month or total sales uh, this year over last year. That way you don't have to go in and manually change it from 2016 to 2017 at the end of the year, right? It's always this year. It's always compared to last year. Very, very useful. So let's get started. Go to Home, Edit Queries. So to start off with, I'm going to assume that we have this particular um, fiscal calendar, right? And let me, I'm going to scroll down here to the end of the year, just so you can see what it looks like, just to really drive the idea home. Notice on the, the 31st, when we go from the 31st to the 1st, the year doesn't change from 2013 to 2014. And the period doesn't change from 12 to 1. And by period, just means month in this case. Uh, notice that we actually have to wait until the 5th before we go from 2013 to 2014 and from 12 to one. That's because I think this is on a Monday, and this is the end of the, the fifth week in this particular 445 quarter, right? So um, we've got the, the 445 year, right? What's the year? And again, it doesn't line up with the Gregorian calendar. It's based on 445. And we've got the period, and we've got these IDs. And what these say is, okay, which year is it uh, in the entire table, right? So 2013 is the first 445 year, and 2014 is the second. Uh, four or four or five years, so first and second. And period uh, 12 in this particular fiscal year, well, that's the 12th period in the calendar so far. But when we hop over to period one of next year, it becomes the 13th period in the calendar so far. We're going to need these ID columns, but that's okay. I generally see them in, uh, in calendar tables when they pop up. Okay, And maybe I'll do a video on how to make them if for whatever reason you don't have them. Okay, first step, we're going to go to Add Column. We're going to add, oops, add a custom column. And it's going to be, we're going to call it SysDate. And it's the date right now, as in the date, well, whenever we execute this query. So if we execute it, or if we refresh the data at 4 in the morning, it's the date at 4 in the morning, which is today, right? So we're going to do a date, time, dot, fixed, local, now. I use this function all the time. It returns, it returns the current system date time. But we don't want the date time, we just want the date part. So we're going to do a date dot from and just around the whole thing. Okay? So it's the date right now. So if you're curious when I'm recording this thing, uh, assuming I spell this right, let's see, what did I do wrong? Let's see. Oh, yep. M is case sensitive. We have to change that F to an F, uppercase, and hit OK. Boom, there we go. Hey, I'm recording on the 29th of 2017. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that, we're going to do the really fun, interesting part. We're going to join this table on itself. So I'm going to go to Home. I'm going to go to Combine. Yours might look a little different. I've compressed the resolution to make it easier to watch this video. Go to Merge Queries, right? And we're just going to go regular old Merge Queries. So we're going to take this table, and we're going to, what, are we, what table are we going to merge it on? Well, we're going to merge it on itself, right? It's perfectly okay. And... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to merge on, uh, we're going to do the date for one of these and the system date for another one. And if you can't remember which one, it's actually, it's not easy to remember, but it's pretty easy to figure out when you've done it wrong. So I'm going to, I'm just going to try. I'm going to say, hmm, do we do, we merge system date on regular date? Oh, good. We've matched 1827 out of 1827. That's the correct way you want to do it. Who cares why at this point? Just remember, you want to look, make sure you get a whole bunch of matches down here. If you do it in the wrong order, if we merge this, on this, we'll get exactly one match. No, nope, it's not how we want to do it. We're going to merge system date on date, right? So we're going to left out or join system date and date for the keys. And what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with these new rows which say, hey, what's the year ID right now? And what's the period ID right now, right? And then we can do some math to get the relative, relative uh, year and uh, period. 
So we hit OK. All right, uh, so we have this new column called New Column. I'm going to change the name of that. And to do that, I could right click and, and go down to uh, Rename. I could go like that. I'm going to be really cool. I'm going to uh, make sure that my uh, formula bar here is open and visible. If it's not, you can come to View and Formula Bar. Twirl it open. And I'm going to go in my code and say, hey, New Column. Don't call it New Column. Let's call it Current. If you want to right click and rename that way, that's just fine. That's just fine. Same thing. Just a few more steps here on Applied Steps. Okay, so now we're going to click on the Expand Bunny Ears. Boop. Okay, so do we want all these? Nope. We just want the period ID, or the year ID, and the period ID. Normally, I always tell you to uncheck Use Original Column Name as Prefix. This is one of the rare instances where we're going to leave it checked, right? And you'll see why in a second. Boom. Okay, so we've got our two new columns, and now we've got, uh, we've got year ID over here. Let me shrink this down. Collapse it. Year ID over here and current year ID over here. So this is the year ID for this particular row in the calendar table, so for 2013-2012. And this is the year ID right now, right? And same with the period, right? It's period ID for this particular row in the calendar table and the period ID right now. So we're just going to do some math to get our relative year and relative period. So we're going to go to add column, add a custom column, and we're going to do relative year. In fact, maybe to be really explicit, I'll call this relative 445 year. Just to be really explicit about what kind of kind of year it is. Okay, So, uh, pretty easy. We're going to take the year ID, and we're going to subtract the current year ID. Okay, Boom. So, we now know that 12-30-2012, uh, based on this particular 445 calendar, is uh, four fiscal years ago from right now. Okay? This number should be negative. If it's not negative, it means you've gotten the order of these things wrong, right? You accidentally put this here or this here. So just swap them. Make sure the the regular is subtracting the current. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the month. Add custom column. Add relative four four five period. Same kind of deal. Take the period ID for each row. And subtract the current period ID, right? And go ahead and click OK. All right. So now we know that this particular row, or to say it otherwise, the date. Uh, oops, let's go all the way to the top. 12:30, 2012. Well, that happened uh, 50 periods before the current period. Okay. And uh, just uh, you're not going to do this uh, long term. I'm just going to filter down to period equals zero, right? Just so you can see that that is indeed right now. Okay, so I do equals zero. Okay, so now we're only looking at relative period of zero, which is of course, so that means that th we're only looking at this period, and of course this period is in this year. And if we look over here, we see the dates that are in the current fiscal period. So uh, 226, 2017, all the way down to 4 2017. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck that filtered row. We don't need that step anymore. And there we go. Uh, you're probably going to want to add some more um, some more columns to this calendar to sort of flesh out a little bit. But you've gotten the really hard stuff. You've gotten your relative year and your relative period. Okay. Well, I do hope that was helpful, and I will see you next video.